There are many unexciting corners of the internet which most of us have learned to tune out. Robotic spam accounts which fill our social media feeds with advertisements. YouTube videos churned out by corporations whose revenue streams rely on mass clicking, providing only minimal value. These are the parts of the modern world which typically aren't given much attention. But nearly a decade ago, an unusual Twitter spam bot advertising ebooks and a YouTube channel offering spoken word pronunciations became internet phenomena, with followers numbering in the hundreds of thousands. The two mysterious profiles became the source of internet investigations, as dedicated sleuths carefully watched, waited, and theorized over their purpose for years. Who is Horse Ebooks, and what is Horse Ebooks, and who runs it? Who can sleuth it out and figure out what's going on? Their content was used as inspiration for jewelry, webcomics, published poetry, and even theories about an impending apocalypse. And after an enigmatic 77-day countdown, when the mystery was finally revealed, it was nothing that anyone could have predicted. Something is going to happen in 74 days. This is the cyberfiction saga of horse ebooks and pronunciation book. Beginning in late 2010, the Twitter account Horse Ebooks began, as most spam accounts do, tweeting advertisements. Multiple times per day, the eponymous profile would tweet a brief sales pitch, along with a link to a suspicious looking website, enticing the viewer to purchase such riveting titles as Horse Sense and the Fancy Phillies Horse Racing System. This was nothing exciting, nor was it anything new. The profile was largely ignored, as most profiles of its kind were. But as the months passed, something changed. Horse ebooks began to garner a fan base, and it wasn't due to its advertisements. Written in the stream of consciousness style of a fever dream, absurd one liners began to punctuate the post. Gate is closed, recommence singing until it opens. Perfect silence that reigned throughout was unbroken, save by the sweet. Those who discovered this profile couldn't help but feel a sense that they'd uncovered something truly unique. There didn't seem to be any obvious connection between the advertisements of ebooks and the surreal post, causing many to wonder what was truly going on behind this profile. Webcomic artist Casey Green is quoted saying, It's completely absurd snippets that almost read like a horse is trying to use a computer. Or maybe a horse was given a computer brain and access to Twitter and this is what comes out. Excitement grew, the profile was spread, and horse ebooks began to develop a loyal following. As its follower count grew, its retweets began to often number in the thousands. The tweets inspired homemade jewelry featuring favorite lines, as well as a three-panel comic series based on the profile's various tweets. High school seniors were using the tweets as yearbook quotes, and of course, YouTubers were recording themselves performing dramatic readings. But you should not feel alone. There are many, many business. A Chicago-based poet named Aaron Watson even composed a book of poetry based around horse ebooks' enigmatic tweets. There's plenty of spam on the internet, but horse ebooks has a way of being weirdly evocative or absurd. It was already doing something that seemed poetic to me, and I wanted to pursue that. She began a Kickstarter to fund this venture, asking for $1,700, but ended up raising over four and a half thousand with more than 300 backers. In a digital world where spam had become intrusive, annoying, and even harmful, horse ebooks seemed to suggest that artistic value could be found in even the unlikeliest of places. And as popularity for the profile increased, so did its mystique. Developing theories as to who or what was behind horse ebooks became a popular pastime. The more optimistic theories suggested the profile was a form of Twitterature, a term meant to define microfiction and poetry written within the boundaries of the platform's 280 character word count. Notable authors such as Neil Gaiman and Jennifer Egan have been known to experiment in this genre. But arguably, the leading theory was that the profile's tweets were exactly what they appeared to be, a bizarre form of spam, and its poetic value was purely the accidental result of an imperfect spam bot. Many recognized the markings of a Markov text generator, a predictive algorithm meant to mimic the writing style of whatever text it's given as reference. Using the ebooks it was promoting as a source, it stood to reason that the string of text it generated, although largely nonsensical, would occasionally be surprisingly beautiful. This theory went so far as to pinpoint the actual individual believed to be behind it. 
Following the domain name of the Horse eBooks website revealed the owner to be a Russian web designer named Alexei Kuznetsov. Confirmation came when it was discovered that Alexei was also employing similar strategies to promote other eBooks of equally specific themes, such as action eBooks and mystery eBooks. Blogger Adrian Chen offered to pay anyone who was willing to go to Alexei's address and confront him, although many fans didn't want the mystery solved and the blogger's offer was met with backlash. When taking all evidence into account, it was safe to assume Horse eBooks was simply a Russian spam bot whose attempts to avoid Twitter spam filter produced snippets of found poetry. So, was the mystery solved? Well, yes and no. The full answer is a bit more complicated. As many noted, the more popular Horse eBooks became, the more the post shifted away from advertising and simply became a venue of bizarre mantras. This revelation couldn't quite be explained by the spam theory and lended quite a bit of credence to the literary theory. In order to fully understand what was truly going on behind the scenes, we must momentarily leave Twitter and look at a seemingly unrelated YouTube channel that was concurrently amidst its own equally peculiar saga. Pronunciation YouTube channels are something many of us use. Whether it's an obscure word, a name we've never heard, or something in a foreign language, these resources can be incredibly valuable in ensuring one doesn't embarrass themselves in a public speaking situation. Pronouncenames.com Bergmann Bergmann Pronunciation Book was a channel that, on the surface, simply provided this unexciting yet necessary service. Ulysses Ulysses. Although, after watching only a few of its videos, one tended to get the feeling that this particular channel was doing something different. The word choices this channel included were a bit all over the place, ranging from the inanely simple bird, bird, to the pandering of the early 2010s meme culture, Nyan Cat, to the oddly specific $1 million commercial. And similar to horse ebooks, normal uploads would be interspersed by the occasional non sequitur, such as this video titled, How to Say Sorry to Your Girlfriend. I'm sorry that I let you do this to me. I'm sorry that we tried to be young heroes. And the ominous, How to Ask for Help in English. Please help me escape from this place. Please. Help. Me. Escape. From. This. Place. I need your help with something, Chief. It became clear that something deeper was going on below the surface with pronunciation book. Although most of the comments tended to be users arguing over the pronunciation in the video, as is common with these types of channels, many expressed their intuition that they were witnessing something alien. And on July 9th, 2013, those intuitions proved correct. Beginning with the number 77, pronunciation book began to count down. Something is going to happen in 77 days. I've been trying to tell you something for 1,183 days. Something is going to happen in 76 days. The 1,183 days is a reference to the date pronunciation book began uploading, revealing what many had been speculating all along. The pronunciation videos were a pretense and the channel's true purpose would soon be revealed. Evoking the same qualities as Horse eBooks, Pronunciation Book was taking something mundane and predictable and completely subverting expectations. The early 2010s appeared to be rich with this type of artistic experimentation. It's worth noting that nearly simultaneously, another YouTube channel with a similar approach was succeeding in creating its own experience. Hey guys, welcome to my tutorial YouTube page. Today is going to be a new favorite tutorial how to pick up um, how to pick up spilled pencils. So first thing you do is you pick it up and you put it away. As the countdown progressed, the voiceovers became increasingly abstract. It is impossible to shirk their deft appraisals. Our perfect systems thrown into the void. Something is going to happen in 13 days. Predictably, responses ranged from confusion to excitement. Some were perhaps overly optimistic. 
Having a deadline to the big reveal seemed to inspire a sense of urgency in the online sleuth community. Members of 4chan and the subreddit The Days seemed especially motivated to uncover as much as they could before the countdown reached its end. After discovering a clicking noise at the end of each of the countdown videos, Members ran them through a spectrogram, a program which provides a visual representation of audio frequencies to produce this image of a suited man pointing. Although without context, there wasn't much to make of this image, aside from the pessimistic theory of an upcoming Rickroll. Reading deeply into the lines spoken in many of the videos, online news outlet The Daily Dot pushed forward a theory that the countdown would end in an announcement for the reboot of the sci-fi series Battlestar Galactica. In this write-up, which I'll link in the description, the lines are each interpreted in order to fit some moment in the TV show, in an attempt to justify the theory which, in hindsight, was probably just a product of wishful thinking. As the countdown continued, collaboration intensified. In our abstraction, we shall shine more bright. Something is going to happen in 10 days. A color-coded Google Doc transcript of all the videos was shared around the forums for more convenient analysis. More theories surfaced, many seemed to point the finger at video game studio Bungie, who had recently announced their new IP Destiny, and who was no stranger to incorporating unique viral marketing into their promotions. And with pronunciation books' frequent use of the word chief, this theory had about as much credibility as any out there. Some of the theories weren't quite so harmless. In speaking with a former mod on the forum 77days.net, a site which is unfortunately no longer accessible, she revealed that some of the more conspiracy-minded and apocalyptic interpretations of the countdown got a little out of hand, with a woman threatening to kidnap her children from her ex-husband and place them in a bunker for protection. But these theories would soon be put to rest. The final day was approaching, and the reveal would be something no one could have expected. On September 24th, 2013, at the end of the countdown, Pronunciation Book uploaded this video. Horse ebooks. Horse ebooks. Horse ebooks. It's morning in cyberspace, and the systems are in love. A spam bot in a channel. What would the parents think? Together again. It's all just data in the net. But we're just getting started. There is a man named Dalton. Dalton is dangerous. He is rich, he is strong, and he is going to crash the stock market. Sidewalks crack and streets go dark. 10,000 bankers shake and scream for Dalton's pyramid. Where are the regulators? That's where you come in. There was quite a bit to unpack in this reveal and it certainly raised more questions than it answered, at least initially. Was the individual behind pronunciation book the same author of the horse ebook's Twitter profile, or were they simply a fan? How were the two linked? Who was Dalton, and what was this woman in the video talking about? Regulators? I've been trying to tell you something for five years. Answers would come quickly, as the descriptions to the pronunciation book videos were replaced with a link to a website called Bear Stearns Bravo. Horse eBooks also tweeted the very same phrase. It seemed Bear Stearns Bravo was what these two internet mysteries had been leading up to for years. So, what was it? Following the link revealed a choose-your-own-adventure game, taking place in the year 3000 centered around a fictionalized version of the banking firm Bear Stearns. Some people think that the market can't think for itself! Those are the same kind of goody-goody beatniks who take their breakfast cereal with soy milk instead of boiling water! Players chose to adopt the role of either a banker or a regulator, participating in the investigation and subsequent trial of the banking firm for various crimes. Choosing from different dialogue options altered how the story progressed. Yes. No. Yes. No. This is yes, why. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. If you yes, don't hang up this no. one's immediately, yes, the next call you no. will make yes, will be from no. jail in yes, hell. No. That's yes, no. I'm no. I'm doing it. Yes. <laughs> okay. 
The game itself could be described as satire, featuring bizarre characters in a comedic tone which occasionally bordered on absurdist. What? <laughs> the game was relatively popular, in its opening weeks as many as 30,000 players signed up. But the reaction was intense, with many fans outspokenly upset. This could have been a product of unmanaged expectations, or because the themes presented in Bear Stearns' Bravo weren't striking quite the same chords as horse ebooks or pronunciation book. It was very much its own thing. Or for some, maybe the journey was just more exciting than the destination. Others loved Bear Stearns' Bravo, and the fact that the reveal wasn't to promote a television show or a AAA video game, but rather the unique creation by a small team of outsider artists was welcome and refreshing. And when reviewing many of the previous tweets and videos, one can find evidence of planning and foreshadowing, indicating that this was not some tacked-on game meant to capitalize on the success of these two sensations, as some suspected. We know Bear Stearns is up to something. But even with the release of the game, there were still many questions. Although the mysteries surrounding Pronunciation Book were answered with Bear Stearns' Bravo, there wasn't the same sense of closure for horse ebooks. The leading theory that the Twitter profile was a spam bot created by web designer Alexei Kuznetsov seemed airtight. Those who had ordered ebooks from the website posted that this individual's name even appeared on the receipt. How could this theory be wrong? Well, it wasn't wrong, only incomplete. Originally, Horse Ebooks was exactly what the consensus suspected it was, a spam bot using social media to advertise a product. But in 2011, the Twitter profile was purchased and taken over by BuzzFeed creative director Jacob Bacala. The price Bacala paid for the profile? $250 worth of Horse Ebooks from Kuznetsov's website. It wasn't until after the profile changed hands that horse ebooks began to generate attention, but the enigmatic qualities of these tweets weren't an algorithmic accident as most suspected. They were each curated by Bacala himself, rearranging and amalgamating phrases he encountered on various spam sites. There's a, like a wide assumption, at least before you took over, that it was just purely algorithmic, just grabbing random bits of text from the internet and spewing them out. None of them were automated. It was performing as a machine, just trying to make it as authentically close to spam as possible. <laughs> Pronunciation Book, on the other hand, was run by Bacala's childhood friend, Tom Binder. And according to a New Yorker article by journalist Susan Orlean, the two have been orchestrating similar performances since high school, where they would put on bizarre plays which left their fellow students and teachers dumbfounded. As adults, the two belong to an artistic collective known as Cynodyne, along with many of the actors seen in Bear Stearns' Bravo. Cynodyne is also responsible for some delightfully bizarre art projects and alternate reality games, such as This Is My Milwaukee, a spoof promotional video to encourage relocation to Milwaukee, which I'll link in the description below. Working. Hammers. Sweating. Power. Circuits. Review. Verify. Bonus? Under. But life in Milwaukee isn't all hard work. In addition to horse ebooks and pronunciation book, Cynodyne had some equally strange methods of promotion, such as advertising a phone number which, when called, would be answered by Bakula himself reading a horse ebook's tweet. Bakula answering these telephone calls could be witnessed in person if one was willing to follow an address listed at the bottom of the Bear Stearns Bravo website to a location known as Bravo Spam. In addition to Bacala sitting at a desk answering the phone, visitors could also watch several wall projections featuring clips from the game while they stood in a tiny white building described as a hole in the wall. The sagas of horse ebooks and pronunciation book were brought to a close, and as previously mentioned, fans either found the conclusion strangely fitting or disappointingly anticlimactic, depending on who you asked. According to a study by CNBC, as many as 48 million Twitter profiles are considered to be bot accounts, filling much of our feed with spam, risky clicks, and potentially malicious software. So to masquerade as something many are so averse to interacting with while cultivating such enthusiasm is an impressive, albeit odd achievement.
The journey these two individuals orchestrated was a puzzling one, and its destination even more so. And despite whether or not the end result is one many agreed lived up to its expectations, the saga of horse ebooks and pronunciation book is undoubtedly one that stands out as one of the internet's most unique anomalies. A thank you goes out to Reddit user Shivers the Ninja for answering many of my questions about this saga, including her own participation, which revealed things I couldn't have uncovered elsewhere. Shivers the Ninja also runs a great subreddit, Orbis Obscura, dedicated to the discussion of internet mysteries. If you're a fan of my channel, I'm willing to bet you'll love Orbis Obscura. I'll leave a link in the description below. Another big thank you to all my patrons. Your support and encouragement help me to continue making the best work I can. If you'd like to join them, I'll leave a link to my Patreon in the description below, as well as a link to my subreddit, where you can join the discussion of past, present, and possible future videos. Lastly, if you'd like to stay up to date on channel news, you can follow me on Twitter at AtrocityGuide.